You think he's a sex addict, Ms. Young? Yes, I do. Oh, how much does he want? He wants it. He can have it every day if I give it to him. Well, then all the men are sex addicts, if that's your definition. When Tanisha worked as a costume designer for one of Arkel's plays, she didn't realize she would become his leading lady in real life. But after two children and eight years of living together, they say they want to bring down the curtain on this relationship. I'm like the black June Cleaver. I'm at home all day with the kids cleaning up. I got a baby in my hand. I got, I got uh, you know, I'm mopping, I'm sweeping, I'm cooking. Would you deny that he is holding down the household? I guess I can take what I can get at the moment. Can Tamisha and Arkel survive the drama that is their life? He calls me names, derogatory names, evil witches and things like that. Or is this relationship in its last act? Today on Divorce Court. Come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Tamisha Young and Arkel's book, The Third. You two have been living together for eight years. You have two children together. Ms. Young, you have one child from a previous relationship. Mr. Brooks, you have uh, four children from previous relationships. You are uh, looking to end your relationship here today. Both of you are seeking a significant amount of money from the other uh, at, as we do this. Uh, so I'm going to talk about each one of these items in a little while. But before we do that, Ms. Young, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here in divorce court today? Well, Your Honor, I'm here today because I'm fed up. I'm ready to pack up my clothes and take my new car that he's paying for right now and leave because he's not the same person that I met in the beginning. And I'm financially strapped. He doesn't have a job. He's a stay-at-home dad. And he has a ton of deal breakers, mm -hmm. one being the engagement ring that he got me that was his grandmother's, onto the dog living in the bathroom. And him just being, Whoa. just living like a hobo, what? not keeping himself up, just not doing the things that he said that he would do in this relationship. So he's not the guy you, th he, you, you thought he was going to be? No, he didn't turn out to be that guy. And I don't know if he's lacking motivation or he's going through something right now, which I don't understand why he meditates like five times a day. You think he's Deepak Chopra, but I don't get it. <laughs> well, tell me, you, you, you named a number of things that are, that, that are examples of his failure to do what he needs to do. Uh, you started out with your grandmother's ring. Tell me about that. Well, um, with, the, with the first child that we had together, he came home. He was stationed in Orange County. He was working. And he, um, we had a long-distance relationship at the time. And he came home, and he proposed to me, like, when I was about six, seven months pregnant. And he took the ring back, and he got it restoned. But mm -hmm. eventually, moving fast forward, he pawned the ring. He pawned the ring? Yeah, what? he pawned the ring. How long ago did he pawn the ring? He pawned the ring a good... I say three years later, he pawned the ring for like 40 bucks, 50 bucks or something. And then I asked him about it, like, hey, you know, did that loan expire? And he went up there to check on it and it expired. So they had put it in the showcase to sell it. And he didn't want to spend the money to get the ring out, which was baffling. The ring didn't mean enough. It wasn't, you know, like a diamond and all of this. So she Why was complaining about the ring from the beginning. You know, Why it was like, okay, so she no, took hang it. Hang on, I didn't, what do you mean the ring didn't mean enough? I mean, it, it wasn't expensive enough for her taste. Oh, she didn't feel that the ring was no. expensive enough. In fact, she gave me the ring back. And, <laughs> yeah. I gave him the ring back because I had a missing stone. And I told him, if you're going to offer a, a lifelong relationship to someone, you should take the consideration to do it properly. Why would you give me a ring with a missing stone? I would have taken the extra step, got it stoned being that it's a family heirloom, and then I would have presented it. I recall uh, Miss Young telling me to go and pawn it to get, you know, along with another ring that belonged to uh, another family member. A two-carat ruby, and I got my ring back. See, two-carat ruby. So, and my you, ring so wasn't that you were in on it with him. You guys were pawning rings because you I was in on being responsible, money. but I wasn't in on it being irresponsible. Like, right, why like didn't you dog, get the ring like back? Like the dog. You, you weren't in on that. She, okay, she I called did me and begged me to bring the dog home. Okay, I'm, I'm, I get texts, oh, here's a, you know, look at this dog, he's so beautiful and this and that. And I'm like, well, you know what, we're having enough trouble just we keeping up with the kids that yeah. we have. Why would we bring a dog home? Oh, I got to have it, I got to have it. But I only have to hang on, it, hang on. Brings it home. In six to seven months, it's no longer her dog, it's my dog. Our, it's no longer our dog, it's my dog. <laughs> because you got to take care of it, well, you got to feed it, that's you got to walk it. Meanwhile, the, that's kids, not the, timeline. Meanwhile, the kids are connected to the dog. 
I'm connected to the dog, obviously. And she's, it's like, well, no, it, it, it's too hairy. It, it, you know. Okay, Ms. this is Ms. what Young. happened. My coworker had a, a, a dog that her uncle left her, and it had a litter. He ended up getting rid of two or three of the dogs for her. But I, it came getting to rid. Point. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hang on. Well, you relocating. Really? But my whole thing is, when I realized that it was a bigger responsibility than I can handle because I'm working, I said we need to be responsible and get your dog placed in with a good family. You were supposed to do that, and you didn't. And then I end up, you know, so, but pregnant you're with the child. One who brought the dog home. Yeah. And I also so now it's his fault. But no, I didn't. It's his fault because he assumed. 100% uh, responsibility for the dog. I came to him like a woman. I said, look, I can't do this anymore. I made a mistake. We need to do the right thing and get this dog placed. I said, I can't be responsible for this dog. If you want to keep this dog in the house, you have to be 100% responsible. I don't want to walk it. I don't have enough money to feed it. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything else to do with the dog. I can only take care of me and the kids. He said, okay, he'll do it. Then he ended up losing his job. He couldn't afford dog food. He had to get the dog food free. You can't take care of the dog. I was Just resourceful. let it go. <laughs> and so, then he was so supposed to have the dog. So you're mad at him because you got a dog, decided that you couldn't take care of it anymore, so it was 100% his responsibility, and then when he lost his job and couldn't feed the dog, you're still mad at him. No, this I'm mad because when it. I end up pregnant with our last child, we had an agreement that he would have the dog gone, and it's, the dog is still here, and the baby's a year. And it's dog hair everywhere. We have to delit dirty clothes in order to wash because that's how much dog hair. Dog hair in the baby mouth, dog hair in my bra, dog hair in my underwear, dog hair, dog hair, dog hair. It's not there. And tell her that's for the an dog. That's exaggeration. The dog is in the bathroom. You have two bathrooms. He keeps the dog in his bathroom, and then he tries to use my bathroom. Mm -hmm. No, use your bathroom because you want the dog, so you should be the responsible. Dog, the dog home. That is all your bad. And he can't. I don't want to talk about it anymore. When the divorce court continues, how many ways can Tamisha put Arkles down? I guess I have to take what I can get at the moment. I'm just an indigent. Are you considering getting married but aren't quite sure your intended is the right one for you? I'll give you my opinion. Call toll free at 1-877-3. 22. Or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Tamisha Young, who wants to end her eight-year relationship because she says Arkles is not living up to the man he promised to be. But is Tamisha's lack of interest the real reason this union is failing? You say that your sex life is now non-existent. Mr. Brooks, not that I don't already have an idea, but why don't you tell me what you're unhappy about in this relationship? Well, it's just, it's just overbearing. There's all these standards that Tamisha has that, you know, it, I'm like the black June Cleaver. I'm at home all day with the kids cleaning up. I got baby in my hand. I got, I got uh, you know, I'm mopping, I'm sweeping, I'm cooking. When, when she comes home, if one thing's out of place, God forbid she should have to move an item from point A to point B. I got like three jobs. She turns into a hellion, right in, on the spot. I have three well, let jobs. Me ask you, let, 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 let me ask you this. I want to ascertain what the economic situation is and what the home situation is. Who's working outside the home? Me. So you are clearly the primary breadwinner. Yeah. Mr. Brooks, has she been the primary breadwinner throughout your relationship? Well, no. I yes, mean, I we, have. we were. Since 2005. Stop. Stop. We relocated. <laughs> To California, my job moved us out here. And I quit a and, job and to I was, here with you. And I was um, uh, making significant money. I'm, I'm really good at fundraising for performing arts organizations mm -hmm. and so forth. But we, we, we lost the contract. And so then I was out, you know, on Didn't unemployment. Didn't have a job. Yeah. Didn't have a job. So they did offer me something in Texas. And, and Tamisha said that if I tried to relocate the family again, again. then uh, that was it. That she was going to end the relationship. So I said, I said, fine, I'm a choose family, you know. And since that has occurred, have you continued to look for more employment? Yes. I just have not been able to find anything that is, is you know, commensurate to what I was doing what, before. What you were making before. Yes. But you're holding down the household in the interim. Is that accurate? That's true. Would, would you deny that he is holding down the household, well, even though he is not economically, you know, contributing? He is doing so through... To the best of his ability. 
now to the best of his oh. ability. Is that insufficient? Um, I guess I have to take what I can get at the moment. <laughs> I'm just an indigent. I got you. I got you. I, I understand exactly what's going on here. Uh, you say that your sex life is now non-existent. Well, it's, it's not non-existent. It's just she's not as interested. And uh, when, I, when I'm, I'm over-interested to hear her, I'm a sex addict. Yes. And so, I'm, you know, I, I, I did three years of counseling uh, <laughs> adolescents, uh, adolescent addiction. So I, I know what makes an addict uh -huh. and what sort of thing goes into it. And that's not me. Okay. Well, you should know. You think he's a sex addict, yes, Miss Young? Yes, I do. Well, how much does he want? He wants it. He can have it every day if I give it to him. He's never satisfied. Mm -hmm. It's always more and more and more. You know, we've, there's a whole group of men who are like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's like why they call it's like men. every day is, is, is fine with them. A whole group of them. And, but there's other things that we need to take care of to get the household in order. It's yeah, more responsible thing. But the one does not obviate the other. I mean, you can still have sex even when he's unemployed. You can still have sex if, you know what yeah. I mean, if the dog is in the house, you I can still have sex, sex with him. I have sex with him. That's not what I'm saying. It's like I don't have sex. You calling him an but addict, we can, though. He is an yeah, addict because he gets upset when I don't want to get, you know, make well, out. Well, all the sex men are sex addicts, if that's your definition. <laughs> when divorce court continues, does Arcos have a darker side to his personality? You say he's a mean person and that he's mean to you. Explain that to me. Does Tanisha need to be more understanding towards Arcos? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call 1-800-282-1991 now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Arkles Brooks, who denies his partner's allegations that he is a sex addict. But did Tamisha have to go elsewhere to look for love? Did she tell you at one point that she was interested in other men? Yeah. You say he's a mean person and that he's mean to you. Explain that to me. He calls me names, derogatory names, evil witches and things like that. When I was looking forward to compliments, oh, you don't need them. Compliments only for when you have low self-esteem. Then he'll get mad when I get other compliments from people outside of the house. Are you mean to him, Mr. Brooks? Do you tell her that compliments are only for people with low self-esteem? I can barely get a compliment in when she's in the mirror and complimenting herself. What? I, <laughs> when I, can I get a word in, Edward? Yes, you can. And you can get I, a word in. <laughs> and then when I do I compliment, compliment myself, and then when I do compliment, she says, uh, she's like, oh, no, no, it's nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. You know, and, or, or, oh, I'm okay, or whatever. So she'll downplay the compliment, and I'm looking like I just... Well, what, what, what's the point if she's not going to receive it? Yeah, she, she doesn't receive it very well. The, and, the way a woman compliment herself is different than a, a compliment she gets from a man. I never compliment myself. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you're I mean, pretty lady. Might, might be new. <laughs> All be you lady. need is a mirror, and, you know... Well, what we, about... We can't walk past a mirror <laughs> without Okay, but let's get back to adoration. the subject at hand. The financial situation, the poor kids at home, the dog in the bathroom. I'm there with them. Okay. And I have to come home to him. What about us but moving? But as long as he's handling it, isn't that cool? He's not handling it all like that. I, you oh, act like I'm on. like, what, I just do nothing when I come home? Bare, next to nothing. So I, Did I, she tell you at one point that she was interested in other men? Yeah. Explain that to me. Well, she said that because of the way that I'm dressing and, you know, that and she's not getting enough attention that she's interested in other men you know she's starting to, 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 to see other men as attractive and you know she's gonna bring it that's to me that's honesty most Did you women just she's cheat. gonna bring it to me so that I, I, I well, can you really tell that man yes that? because I want him to change most women just cheat he should be thankful that I told him don't that the last she, one hey, 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 hey. she Ms. just young, cheated Ms. Young don't speak for most women because most women aren't like you thank God <laughs> don't put me in that well, I Don't thought I was being uh, honest. Tell me about the $16,755.28 you want from Mr. Brooks. I think I need, I, I, I think I should have the car because 
it's um, my means of employment and taking care so of So you have a, tonny, a 2012 Nissan Sentra. Uh-huh. And the note on it is 16,755.28. Yes, that's what's left. And uh, the car is in, oh, there it is. Yeah. Now the car, the car is in your name? Yes. And oh, it's in Mr. Book's name. Is his name? Mm -hmm. Who's paying the car note? He is right now. I thought you weren't working. Uh, unemployment. Oh, for, from unemployment. Oh, okay. Right. So that was the agreement. I take care of the larger bills, he take care of the car note. And you believe that he should give you the car but continue making payments on the car for you? Yes. Because? Because that's the right thing to do. When divorce court continues, what does Judge Lynn have in store for Tanisha? Ms. Young, you just... Are you going to take one of these? Young, I'm talking to you. Take them off. Back I'm up. about to tell you some very negative things, and I want you to hear all of them. need to be more understanding towards articles. Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call 1-800-282-1991 now. Divorce Court returns with the case of Tamisha Young and Arkles Brooks, who want to dissolve their eight-year union even though they have two children together. You are countersuing for $3,800, <laughs> which includes a 32-inch flat-screen TV, his computer, a first and last month's rent on a new apartment. Right. Tell me about those things. Well, Are those things that you bought, or did you buy them together? Well, basically, I bought all of those things. Why would I pay you to relocate? Because I'm in a situation where I'm, I have the so kids. So I should take my hard I got it, I got it, I got it. Ms. Young, you just, you just... Are you going to take one Ms. of the Young, children? I'm talking to you. Take them off. Like I'm I, about to tell you some very negative things, and I want you to hear all of them. <laughs> <laughs> You're dedicated to the surface of things. You are a storefront. And, and I will say this. You're out there making money, and I give you mad props for that. You're taking care of your economic business. And I'm always all about people who do that. But that don't make you better than him. And, and, the, and the weave or whatever you got going on in your hair doesn't make you pretty. What makes you pretty is your heart and your soul and your love and your care. And you ain't got much of that going on. And uh, you came out here and you're dogging the man out because he lost an $80,000 a year job and he feels badly about it and he's working and he's cooking and he's cleaning and he's doing the thing and you're like, I'm not the princess that I should be and you're all upset about it and I think that is so small-minded, so tired and it's so trifling. And then you talk about this is what women like and this is what women need. Uh-uh. Women don't do that. Women take care of their, their men when they're low. Women love them. Women, women, women don't put them down when they need applause the most. We, we don't do that. So don't, so don't, so don't claim that. M Mr. Brooks, I like you. I do. Thank you. If I were you, I'd get a job, any job, and run. <laughs> <laughs> I really would. Uh, I cannot award you the car. It's a car, it's something he bought, he paid for with his unemployment. That, you know, I, I can't award you that car. I don't know who's going to take care of the kids. I think you should have all your stuff. If you leave the house, you, you will, you'll be leaving with that. Right. Um, first and last month's rent for a new apartment, I think that's reasonable, too. You can have <laughs> that as well. Um, he's continuing to pay on the car note. He can have the car because he's paying the car note. Not, not this month. His ADD has run out. Well... Then that's his problem, but that's his problem to have. It's it, it's not his problem to have while you're driving away in it. Um, <laughs> so I will award you fifteen hundred dollars per person last month's rent on a new <laughs> apartment, and your claim is dismissed in its entirety. It is so ordered. All right. Morning,